Welcome back, everyone. So today I'm going to talk about bibliographical references in LaTeX. This is, again, one probably one of the most powerful and useful features of LaTeX is that it just handles your references for you, and you don't really need to worry about it too much once you get it into a bib file. Now, I have a couple things set up. Now, if you've been following my channel, you know that I got a lot of my original stuff from Luke Smith, and I just modify stuff as I see fit for my own purposes and uses, but I do use a lot of that stuff and uh, customize it. So some of the things I have set up are, I do have a some Vim plugins uh, for LaTeX. Um, so for LaTeX specifically, for my live preview, uh, I am using uh, VimTech right here. And that's really like all I have for um, plugins wise for LaTeX. Now for hotkeys and like my own custom code snippets, I have a lot of stuff broken out here. A lot of the stuff is again from Luke. Um, a lot of it I have modified or added myself. And some of these I'm probably not going to be keeping because they were specific to Luke's own workflow. But anywho, there are, um, All right, so a package I'm gonna to cover today and not in excruciating detail about what it does because the only thing I use it for right now is just to get references in LaTeX in an easy manner. So the package is BibLaTeX. Now to use uh, Bibber, BibLaTeX, and references in LaTeX, um, what you're gonna to have to do is compile your LaTeX document, run Bibber on your LaTeX document, run La compile your LaTeX document again, and then maybe even compile it another time. So all in all, that's probably three to four steps. I have automatic compilation right here in Vim, so I don't have to do any of that, which is great. So I have my, in square brackets, these are the optional arguments for a command. Uh, usually with use package or certain other commands, these square brackets let you put in optional parameters. Um, I have backend bibber and style is author year dash icomp. I don't know exactly 100% what that does. I think it's just to style the output when it actually prints your references down below. And then the actual package name, biblotech. So we specify that we're going to use that package for our bibliography, but we actually need to add the path to our bib file. Now, in my previous video, I mentioned about having all of your resources for your medium or long form document broken out into separate directories and you could just reference it that way. Um, one cool thing about, again, that this just being plain text and uh, me running a Linux system or if you have a Nix type system is if you set a variable to say a bib file, if you keep just one single massive bibliographical file in you know something.bib and you set a uh, exported shell variable to that, you could easily just make that shell variable your add bib resource argument. And that way it's, it's done. You don't have to pick a file path. It's just referenced by default. Um, you will have to escape the dollar sign character, but once this compiles, it will function this way. And I think that's really, really cool. Uh, because I do maintain just a single consolidated bib, bib file. Now, what I actually do for that is I have a couple separate mini bib, bib files. I have one for articles, one for books, and one for like academic research papers. Um, I don't have anything in papers, um, mostly because I think I've been putting all the journals I've been reading into articles. If I read something and it's a book or it's an article or it's a paper, um, and it's something that's not like a fiction story and it's something that's actually nonfiction, I will probably put it into my bib file just because it's also just a collection of the things that I have read. Um, most of what I have in here is books. I read a lot of technical books about R, so I have a lot of things in here about that. And as I add new entries to this, um, this is my books.bib. So this is my bib, bib file for um, just books. Now I have all these different things separated out, but what I actually reference and what I really use is my mega.bib file. I know, brilliant naming convention I have here. But this is just everything. Every single reference in every other sub bib file is in mega.bib. And in my shell variable, 
I believe it's in my bash profile. Yes. So right here, export bib, home, documents, bib, mega bib. So this is the reference that lets me do my dollar sign bib in the LaTeX document and actually run it from wherever and I have my references available to me. So one, the way I actually consolidate all of these other sub files into one megabib file is I have a very, I have a single one liner um, in this directory. Now this whole thing is on GitHub just because I want all my references hosted out somewhere else. And um, what I do is I just source this script locally. So if I was in here, um, I would just do, you know, dot forward slash and then consolidate and it would run. There we go, it's consolidated. And what it does is it takes all the contents from each of these subfiles and then shoves it all into mega.bib. And that shell script that I sourced right here is just catting in all of that text from any uh, file that starts with A, B, or P, article, book, paper, with any other um, characters after it that end in .bib and then takes that content and overwrites this file with that content. So anytime I run that shell command or that, uh, that script, it will take all of the content from all these files and completely overwrite all of the contents in mega.bib, which means that every time I run it, I completely refresh my entire list of references. And that is how I consolidate everything. Now, as for how I get all of my um, text and all my references in, to my bib files. Um, if it's something that doesn't really, if it's a PDF, it might have an embedded uh, DOI, uh, digital object identifier. And if I was gonna do something with that, Luke actually wrote a script and had some file or tool made. I'm not sure if he even keeps it in his um, dot files anymore um, available to other people, but I do use it and I did grab it. I'm not sure if I just watched the YouTube video and, and just wrote down the text by, by hand. But what this will do is if you pass it a PDF, it will look for a DOI in the metadata or try and send the PDF to text and look for the DOI. And if the PDF does have an embedded, um, an embedded DOI, either in the metadata or in the actual content, like they write it out in the actual document, then this will actually go to crossref.org and pull out the bib entry for that document. And let me see if I have an example of something. Cause I also keep all my stuff archived afterwards. I think it's in, um, where do I keep it? Books maybe? No. Or did I keep it? I know I have all these things. Oh, I think it's in research. No, I don't know where I keep anything anymore. I need to sort this out. Oh, that's right, because I use Mendeley now for all of my papers, I keep it all in there and it's all consolidated in there. I was keeping all of my read and finished, you know, I finished reading um, items in a separate directory of just, you know, I finished reading. Um, but in any case, I think um, 50 years of data science, I think this one has one. Yes, DOI. So we can see that if I actually open this document, um, there we go. Right there, front and center, we have a DOI number. So it's gonna grab this one way or another, either from the meta metadata or just from the actual text of the document. So 50 years of data science. Uh, there we go. So I'm gonna run get bib, which is that shell command right here. It actually grabs that document and then runs it through these commands to grab the DOI and get it from crossref and I'm gonna do 2017 and then 50 years of data science. And what this will do is it will find the bib reference that you would put in a bib file to reference in a LaTeX document and it will just spit it out in my terminal as plain text. There it is. And so what I might do is I might say, you know, this command and then two angle brackets this way. If I did one angle bracket, like my script that consolidates everything, a single one will overwrite the entire contents of a file. 
I don't want that. I want to add this to my existing file. So if I did two angle brackets, it would append this to the bottom of my existing file for my probably um, papers or articles, whatever I put it into. So in the in the meantime, you know, there's what that reference would look like. It's all formatted for me. I don't have to write this out, make any syntax errors, nothing. It's just done. So this is how I would grab most of my references from any papers or anything I'm reading is this. Now, one really cool thing, um, I don't, I, I kind of like Mendeley. I'm thinking I, I might move away from it just because it is graphical and it might be a little bit difficult to grab my notes out of it because um, I do like how Mendeley works though and how I can separate things into folders this way. I, I like some some of this and what I, one thing I don't know about though that I need to look into is getting all of my notes and highlighting out of Mendeley and is that even possible? Because I do have, um, like in this document, I have a lot of notes saved, a lot of annotations. And so if I was gonna get all of these things out of here, where might I grab them from? So that's something I need to look into myself actually. But in any case, um, one thing that's really cool about Mendeley is that you can actually consolidate a bib file with multiple papers by just selecting a bunch of things and then exporting to a bib file and it will actually have all those references for you. Um, you can also search for more documents and publications within Mendeley, add them to Mendeley, and there's so many right, different resources just to get free papers. I think I have some things, um, Sci-Hub I think is like a free source for, um, grabbing, I think it's like one of those like piracy, but of scientific literature websites. And you can grab a bunch of papers and just put them in the Mendeley, have all the bib references or grab the DOIs, get your references and you're ready to go. So all of that, all the way back around full circle, populates your bib file. So now we have items to reference in our bib file. We've read some papers, we wanna reference them in our text. So now I have a document here. It's just got you know two paragraphs of lorem ipsum text. And in here, I'm actually citing uh, a paper or a book. I, I think it's a book I'm actually citing here by, um, uh, wow, I just forgot his first name, Hadley, Hadley Wickham. And uh, right now, it doesn't do anything. It's just a reference right there. Cool, Parenth parenthetical citation. But if I uncomment the single command, so I have use package to grab the package functionality of Biblotech. I have the bib resource, where am I pulling your references from, dude? And then I have my actual citations. I can do cite, text cite, parent cite, and even then you could probably do new commands and customize the formatting of your citations. But in any case, I like parenthetical citations. Then there's my actual name of the citation, which in my bib file, Mm. Uh, there it is. So you can see that the text is verbatim. Capitals, capitalization matters, which is why I keep it all lowercase text and four year in case they write um, things in like 15, 17. I just like the four year. So in this case, exact text, case sensitive, parent site, that text. And then as soon as I um, uncomment, print bibliography, it will consolidate my references. If you were going to actually do this in a Loctic document without live auto compilation like this, you would have to compile, run Bibber, compile, and probably compile again. But once you do all that stuff, it automatically will print a section header for you. If you had your table of contents, I think it adds references to your table of contents. If not, I think I already customized a way that you can add it anyways in my template that's on my GitHub. And I'll probably talk about that in a later time. But in any case, um, I have style author year slash icomp. I think that's what actually formats this where it's like author year and then all of that instead of like number references. I think that's actually, there's some issue with like, uh, I think site or text site where it does like the, the Wikipedia type references where it's like square brackets and then a number and the number coincides with your reference. I like actually having like the parenthetical citations. I just like how they look. But in any case, um, I also believe it sorts them alphabetically. So if I did um, one more reference after this, here is more text. And then I want a parenthetical citation of mold 2003. And then 
line break. There we go. So because I put Wickham first and mold after, M comes before W, obviously, it will still sort them alphabetically. I really like that. So that is how to do bibliographical references in LaTeX. You run, uh, you grab your package, you have BibLaTeX, you have your customized options here. You don't, you don't need style written. In fact, if I remove style, oh my gosh, I cannot type. If I did not have style, that's what does your number references. And now it's doing first name, last name, and then the year is not even in there. So that's why I do author year dash icomp is that I do not like this style of reference. But back in Bibber, your style, BibLawTech, tell it what resource to use, reference your stuff in your text, and then print your bibliography wherever you want in your file, most likely at the end. And that is how to do references in LaTeX. Enjoy.